and for that reason networking is important right people young people don't go into events they don't come into webinars they don't go into podcast they don't watch that's why i said okay you can't go even we do a lot of webinars join our webinars you if if i know you personally i might recommend you to for some job but if you don't put an effort in don't don't expect me to recommend you anything i wouldn't i don't know you how what would i put my credibility online i wouldn't correct correct so so basically uh, first of all thanks a lot for accepting my invite amarji and uh, uh just to start from the view point uh, you have in the industry you, you worked in the industry you are contributing to the industry so as a whole supply chain industry so uh, if i'll ask you that currently which are the top 3 challenges which industry is facing what global supply chain leaders are talking about uh, so that the audience can relate to those challenges as well and in terms of the best practices how industry is taking different initiatives across the supply chain currently which are related to these three top challenges if you can share your views on that okay uh hi manindra thanks for having me on your all about supply chain podcast uh, i always uh, you know encourage all the young people to create content and you know, contribute to the supply chain so well done for doing this now you ask me the top 3 challenges uh the supply chain leaders are facing and i think you asked me after that uh what would be the three i think initiatives we should be doing it to you know counter the challenge so when i you know i go to do a lot of conferences even so i speak as a you know master you know, master class trainer or the keynote speaker and during my you know job as a ceo i should do job where we basically building a one of the biggest community of supply chain we already Uh, more than thirty-five thousand email newsletter newsletter subscribers. We got you know almost more than six thousand members on our platform, um, and you know last year my content is viewed by twenty-three million people, twenty-three point five just on LinkedIn alone. So we got we got a uh, we and I do have opportunity to talk to a lot of supply chain leaders and professionals. So in general. number one is always the cost pressures right cost is always a problem because we are a support function in most businesses uh people used to complain about we are not in the c suite uh, people see admin function i mean that has gone now so everybody knows supply chain is important supply chain people getting an a uh, position on a c level and now the title of a chief supply chain officer which nobody used to hear 3 years ago is pretty common right now Uh, so that so so all of that is gone now. But now you got the seat on the table. But the thing is, time to deliver. Is and given the economic crisis what we have globally, generally, you know, things are not going good anywhere. You know, except maybe Saudi or India, right? Where the you know I would say the economy is positive. China is always developing anyway. We we want China to develop, otherwise we are screwed, right? You know, because billion people plus. So. with that said the one of the challenges which most of the supply chain leaders have is the how to maintain the cost reduce the cost so the businesses they are serving stay profitable so and that includes all the cost element which we are influencing from the material cost to direct purchase material cost to the uh, you know our contribution to the cogs logistics cost which include warehousing cost inbound outbound uh, people cost uh, any tech which we use that cost all of that uh, which is comes under let's call it supply chain spend which includes direct and indirect material it, it's our job to find uh, a way to reduce cost okay so that's a challenge which leads to uh the way how people one of the reason i can how can we influence so i'm going to go this way i'm going to identify the challenge and i'm going to identify the let's call it you know few tips the one way is to do it is to really understand your cost because not many people actually do understand what is a cost right and and what generally happen is the procurement guys they don't do actually commodity strategy and they just try to focus on cost reduction which actually if they look start looking into holistically their commodity strategy so if they start creating focus on more value creation and helping the business to be better more customer service oriented i.e they can sell more that means it will reduce the overall cost to bring business right 
uh, also this whole offshoring i outsourcing idea is pretty much obsolete there's a trend of insourcing nearshoring which i always uh, preach because it also have the impact to the uh, inventory lead time for example yeah okay so so so, so we should do that we should start doing more focus on our think about lean supply chain more agile supply chain you know use the things like postponement uh work with the partner people who are businesses who act like more a partner right and start uh, training everybody into the basic principles of supply chain so they understand what cost involves and generally cost reduction cost management is a job of two to three people if the average of 20 team is there everybody else is there i need to buy stuff i need to ship stuff i need to make stuff i need to demand plan stuff but only two people are really thinking about cost right which is your commodity manager or a buyer or something but that's wrong i think everybody needs to think about how we can reduce cost that means you can do kaizen even where you can come up with the cost reduction idea you can involve into other people you know how, how i used to involve with my kaizen even product line people product management marketing people uh, our people from production quality you know they generally have a lot of good ideas anyway so cross functional alignment into the cost reduction so that's one uh, i think now second one is because there's a cost pressure and especially in the western world when there is a lack of less well skilled people and everybody's working from home and nobody goes to work it creates this whole less call it inefficient i think working environment which leads to the enforced digitalization of supply chain that means right now i think more so b to c is all we are used to e-commerce being b2c but i think the b2b businesses needs to go to more e-commerce way, right so i was doing a project with a, one of the distributors in saudi and did locally that we implemented the full end to end order management system where a customer can place their orders you know they can check their pricing they can check their inventory what's available to order they can uh, after placing order they get automated order confirmation which linked to the uh, supplier erp then they also their customers can also download their documentation you know check the eta etd of the containers also check their order basically the whole order to invoice cycle including invoice and packages is in one platform which is pretty much like amazon of doing business right the benefit of that is when you should have like 8 or 10 customer service people managing 54 countries you ship with with this one platform you need only 5 the remaining 4 people can do something else you know i'm not saying they lose to do job but this is the by product but, but the better product is the better visibility of the information okay. better agility so now everybody realize we have to go digitalization but they are pretty slow in doing so so this is where i seem to you come and help people you know we can make this whole transition super quick we start mvp we get you you know 5 10 customers on board you see the benefit your customer can see the benefit they see the improvement in their communication visibility improve in velocity a reduction in variability of supply chain all of that improves the agility and overall efficiency and effectiveness of supply chain right okay. uh so digitalization is the it's one of the challenges and i just suggested you know it's very difficult to have the all the resources in house so you know they can work with people like us and we help them do so now that leads to the third one so i say as a supply chain professional 5 years ago 10 maybe if you are good in your technical knowledge you know your demand planning but is management logistics procurement commodity negotiation all the you know certifications and stuff is required without that you are not and you also need to be good in people skills you know your communication skills presentation skills negotiation skills uh, managing up managing down you know all this kind of stuff leadership um uh, project management if i do that so that was required but now there is a third element to that which is technological understanding so there's no point throwing buzzwords around blockchain for supply chain 3d printing for supply chain rpa for supply chain cloud for supply chain right w- what is needed here is you need to understand the technology good enough so you know that which technology is suitable to what part of supply chain okay okay yeah, yeah. okay so yeah. with that said i think uh uh 
there is a need for developing supply chain people okay. right and uh, this is where sm dojo comes in you know we, we if you go to our website we have a courses which explain about how to create your business case it take it tells about how to implement technology it talks about supply chain digitalization it gives you all the knowledge of procurement you need it gives you knowledge, knowledge of supply chain warehousing logistics the point is uh, we have created this academy just to basically solve this third issue the people issue right mm. is you what you generally the historically the certification was like uh, say okay let's do some i don't know cc cscp or whatever certification and apex people will say if you do acm will you it, it it will basically save 10% it will increase your you know pay rise by 10% but the thing is if the company is funding so where this 10 10% pay rise come from that pay rise is come from and this person you train is going going in somewhere else and working for them so yeah. you spend the money but benefiting somebody else and the person make get the money off you to get trained and then make more money to me so it's all fine but the thing is you the, the the people who funded on the development did not get benefit so this is where we come in with the same dojo we put uh, with the we have launched a new platform called the same dojo for business where a manager can assign courses can see the competency can see how much work you, they have done what quizzes they have passed there's a leaderboard batch system so you control the development so nobody can leave and, and like after then the certification is the continuous development program mm-hmm. we also issue certification and all that but but the thing is it's in the company's hand what what content they want to give okay so in summarize i say cost pressure is a issue followed by the you know digitalization or lack of understanding of digitalization followed by the development the people to be ready with the challenges which is managing cost reducing cost improving customer service and also digitalization right so people spend a lot of money in digitalization without really assessing Uh, how much people are capable of and then say oh we have a change management issue the reason you have a change management issue because the people you have not trained enough mm-hmm. to understand what we doing while we doing you have to explain first right mm-hmm. if you don't explain the benefit of digitalization don't expect people to support it because somebody told told you so kind of thing so this is what i th- see the challenges are and we trying to solve those challenges correct correct i think you have given a very good uh, very good ecosystem way of how correct. these problems fit into the picture and the challenges and i think you rightly mentioned and how scm dojo is plugging that gap in solving the problem but according to you uh, do you think that even there are so big big empires big big companies uh, available in the industry they have lots of money but why they are still failing to uh, train their people it is good for scm dojo because you have an opportunity to bridge that gap but still uh, is there any specific reason that why uh, the companies are not able to give training to this people in supply chain or there is a big gap coming from the skill point of view when people graduate from the college like where do you find a big gap see i i i think this is a issue of demand supply okay so if you go to europe the hard to find because they have the you know limited i mean immigration is possible in europe but it's limited right Mm-hmm. not everybody can go even they want to you know it's not like you take a student visa you go and you find a job there i mean it says a pretty horrendous process same with us as well it's not easy to immigrate uk you know usa and find a job because and same with canada that you know all those countries where immigration is difficult and where they are western countries with the big industries they don't have enough people talented people so 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 lack of talent or lack of uh, you know you know educated or you know talented staff is a issue so they invest money in developing the people because they know if they don't do it they're screwed because they can't find enough people so 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 there's a pull in the demand of the skilled people which drives the money to invest to develop mm. okay so it's same game demand supply but on the other hand if you take dubai i don't want to give india example because i don't know i don't i don't want to upset my indian friends but uae is a good example right in uae 73% of the country is immigrant right especially in dubai everybody wants to come here in dubai they want to work here you put a job in dubai out any job small or big doesn't matter If within 5 hours you can have 5 500 applications guaranteed oh. on linkedin guaranteed you put the job in 500 applications why so that's that means 
everybody wants to come to here and they want to work cheap and so the hiring people have so when i was in bridgestone one of my biggest i was i used to really dread putting a job out in any portal including because i know i'm going to be bombarded by 6 700 cvs and i have to go through all of them to decide which one i did not selected and and then and all of this exercise was bloody useful or useless sorry useless because eventually all my colleagues are sending the cvs to their brothers sisters uncle friend nephew niece you know paji give this person a job you know <laughs> give this person a job this kiss i mean i even used to decide which one to pick because if i pick one i can upset the other colleague right so i just decided i'm not going to take any recommendation from anybody and i told them the point is there is a huge there's a less demand and huge supply so now as a bridgestone person or as a, as a leader not bridgestone person apologize as a leader or a hiring manager in dubai you don't you never really think about twice that i have to train somebody Hmm. because you know it's easy to get rid of people based on uae law right hmm. you give them one month notice if you're really nice as a company you give them a couple of two to three months of salary and boom you're done laws support that so hmm. if you want to develop competency you don't can't be bothered to spend 3 5000 $5, to get a trainer and do a ccpn and basically wait for somebody to pass the exam just move them out somewhere else i somebody which you think can do the job or better right so acquiring talent in middle east is not an issue at all because there's so much talent out there mm. so in that case you don't spend any money in talent development or competency building because you know you just going to acquire them it's cheaper and quicker <laughs> okay it makes sense also i can relate somewhere even though you did not cover some part of it as by your choice but yeah i can agree to this yeah <laughs> exactly and i would get the same issue in india same issue in pakistan same issue in bangladesh too many people too less jobs mm. right too many talented people too less jobs what's happened is every every job 500 people competing mm. right so the person who basically gets the job is most and you know i i get every day two to three messages on linkedin Okay, I am this. I've got MBA in this. I've got B in this. I've got CSCP, CPIM, CLTD. All those bloody acronyms, right? Can you help me find the job? I'm fantastic. No, I answer them. No, I can't. Because in in UAE or in Middle East, it's very simple. You need to know the hiring manager personally to find a job. If you don't know the hiring manager personally, you got zero chance of getting a job here. Fact, a friend. Uh... or a reality of what actually the situation is yeah and for that reason networking is important right people young people don't go into events they don't come into webinars they don't go into podcast that's why i said okay you can't go to even we do a lot of webinars join our webinars you if if i know you personally i might recommend you to for some job but if you don't put an effort in don't don't expect me to recommend you anything i wouldn't i don't know you how, how would i put my credibility online i wouldn't correct correct